Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about the basics of twig identification. I hope that you find the content in this video educational and useful. If you do, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. As for now, let's go ahead and get started with learning about twig identification. This is a twig from a magnolia tree, which we are going to use to learn how to distinguish from apical and lateral buds on a twig. In case you aren't familiar with what a magnolia tree looks like, they produce these beautiful pink flowers in the early spring. Apical, or terminal buds, are buds that reside at the end of a twig. On a magnolia twig, the apical buds are large and they are pubescent. But what does pubescent mean? Well, when a bud has tiny hairs or is fuzzy, it is pubescent. The apical bud of a magnolia twig is highly pubescent. Sometimes pubescence can be difficult to spot. The apical bud of a box elder is not super fuzzy, but it still has visible white hairs. This makes box elder technically pubescent. Another term that is useful to know is glabrous. Glabrous means that an apical bud is smooth and has no hair or fuzz present. An example of glabrous would be the apical bud of a sycamore twig. There are no hairs present on this twig, and a glabrous bud can also be waxy as seen in the picture of the lateral bud on this willow twig. Now I just mentioned a lateral bud, but that is a term that we haven't gone over yet. Lateral or auxiliary buds are buds that reside on the sides of a twig. On a magnolia twig, the lateral buds are not as large or as pubescent as the terminal buds. In many tree species, there are significant differences between apical and lateral buds. For instance, here's a picture of the apical and lateral buds of black walnut. The apical bud is at the end of the twig, is larger and more oblong than the lateral buds. There are three lateral buds on this black walnut twig. They are smaller and more circular than the apical bud. Both lateral and apical buds may contain bud scales. In order to understand bud scales, we will be looking at the twig of sweet gum. Sweet gum trees produce these infamous spike balls every year. Okay, so what is a bud scale? Bud scales are modified leaves that surround a bud. Bud scales can be arranged in different patterns. The first and most common of these patterns is named imbricate. This is when bud scales on a twig overlap each other like the shingles on a roof. An example of imbricate bud scales would be a sugar maple twig. The next type of bud scaling pattern is a valvate pattern. Instead of the bud scales overlapping each other like with the imbricate pattern, they meet in the middle. We can see this valvate pattern in red stem dogwoods. Lastly, the final bud scale type is a naked bud. These buds have no bud scales present, but can be protected by small modified leaves. An example of a tree species that has a twig with a naked bud would be a pawpaw. Buds can be arranged on the stem of a twig in two common fashions. The first arrangement is opposite, an example of an opposite arrangement is the buds on a box elder twig. The buds on this twig are directly across from each other. Now, the second common arrangement is called alternate arrangement. An example of an alternate arrangement would be a red bud twig, which has staggered buds that are not directly across from each other. Now that you know how to identify apical and lateral buds and are familiar with bud arrangements, let's look at nodes and inner nodes. Now, what is a node? A node is where buds attach directly to the stem. So what about an inner node? An inner node is the space between two nodes. Besides types of buds, leaf and bundle scars are important to know. This is the twig of a Kentucky coffee tree that will be used to help us identify leaf and bundle scars. The pale bean-shaped area on this twig is the leaf scar. A leaf scar represents a place on a twig where a leaf was once attached. Leaf scars can be a few different shapes and sizes, but we aren't going to cover that in this video. Inside of the leaf scar is a bundle scar. This is where the leaf was attached to the plant's vascular tissue. Additionally, there are four different types of pith that are found in twigs. The first is a homologous, otherwise known as an entire pith, that is solid and uniform. Cottonwoods have homologous piths. The next type of pith is diaphragmed which is when the pith is solid but has thin crossed walls inside of it. This type of pith can be found in pawpaw twigs. Now, we also have a chambered pith, which is hollow but has thin crossed walls. 
This can be found in black walnut twigs. Lastly, we have hollow pits, which are, as you would expect, empty with no thin cross walls. Honeysuckles have hollow pits. There are a few common features that aid with twig identification. For instance, lenticels are pores on a twig that allow for gas exchange to occur between the inside of the twig and the outside air. On this sugar maple twig, the lenticels are the small yellow dots. Some species have more prominent lenticels than others, so this can help out a lot when trying to identify species. Tulip trees are an example of a species that have a pair of stipules that are leaf-like structures that will eventually fall off. When they do, the stipules leave behind a stipule scar. In this case, it is a ring all the way around the twig. These stipule scars, being present or not, can distinguish one species from another. Now, there are some more uncommon identification features that I would like to mention. Some species of trees have twigs with a distinguishable odor. If you were to scratch a twig from a sassafras tree and sniff it, you would notice that it has a very similar smell to that of Fruit Loops. Bradford pears are an ornamental tree that is one of the first to bloom in the spring here in Missouri. These trees are one of the many species of tree that can arm their twigs with thorns to help protect themselves against herbivores. Cottonwood trees, along with several other species of trees, have twigs that secrete resin. Resin is an organic substance that is insoluble in water and is secreted by plants. The yellowish brown resin of the cottonwood twig can be seen here. Okay, now that we've learned some of the basics of twig identification, let's recap what we've learned with an example. Here is an unknown twig. The first thing we should do is see whether it is opposite or alternate. The twig is alternate, so we will now want to focus in on the apical and lateral buds. Looking at both of them, the apical bud is just a larger version of the lateral bud. However, something you might notice is that there are very prominent bud scales on these buds, and they are arranged in an imbricate pattern, which is when the bud scales are overlapping each other. Now, if we take a look at the pith, we'll see that it is solid, so it is homologous. Lastly, we will want to look over the twig to see if there are any major distinguishing features that might help us out. I see some lenticels, and additionally, this species has buds that sort of remind me of beetles because they are really shiny. You're probably wondering what species this is. Well, it's liquid ambar styrantifloa, otherwise known as the sweet gum. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the basics of twig identification with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you all in my next video.